All right, call the meeting to order. First up is to approve the agenda. Does anybody have anything to add? I do. Um, I need to add a discussion about Bridge 33. Um, we've got some things happening with that bridge okay. that I'd like to fill you all in on, and, and it's more than just a staff report item. Okay. Do we want to add it? We'll add it right underneath the capital improvement. Yeah, I think it might kind of ties into probably part of that discussion. Okay, Bridge 33. Got that, Lisa? Where are you adding it in? We're going to put Bridge 33 right underneath the Capital oh, Improvement oh, gotcha. Reserve All Fund. Right, gotcha. yeah. Good. How about you, Dave? I'd like to uh, add something to the agenda as a, as a, um, every meeting, where right, right under or right above public comment, have board comment inquir inquiry. Board comment? Sometimes someone on the board wants to share something it's not on the agenda well you can always do that you can always do that under other business right at the end Tip, I mean we don't call it that but typ typically what we've done in the past is other business we bring up any mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. between us that mm -hmm. wasn't on here okay if you want to if you're okay with that yeah yeah I wanted to add an, an executive session at the end for personnel uh, issue executive session personnel and <coughs> you get that Lisa and okay and I would like to also add an executive session and we're going to label it uh, in regards to performance of an appointed town official. Okay. And it has to be worded just that way. Okay. Well, it's the same thing. Same thing. Same thing as I want. Okay, so okay. strike but Pauls. Yeah. Strike Pauls. Yeah. All yeah. right. The same thing. All right. So performance of a town. Uh, performance of appointed town official. I had a feeling that was probably the same thing, but yeah. Yeah. I was given guidance to use those exact words. Mm. All right. Anything else, uh, change or add? You need to accept that as amended. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. All right. Nice have it. Okay. We will open that up to public comment. comment. Is there anything? that is not on the agenda this evening that someone would like to bring to our attention or comment on? Is Bridge 33 the Lily's Hill Bridge? Mm-hmm. Okay. I figured you would wait around for that. So in, in regards to the Bridge 33? Okay. Anybody else? It's a big audience tonight. <laughs> it's because you didn't turn the heat on. You kept them all away. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anything on your end, Janice? Are you good? No. Good. Okay. All right. We will move along. Our first appointment's not until six fifteen. I don't see him yet, so we will uh, we'll just move on to the continuation of uh, last meeting. We started talking about you know we've been exploring different ways of paying for water, and we were exploring this um, this new EU. Um, and we had sent Greg back with some homework, which everybody should have gotten a uh, three-page handout in regards to the calculations of how, how that potentially would look like if we did go to um, um, a little bit of a different EU system in regards to lining up with bedrooms and, and the uh, residents. So. Um, I'll just first, I'll let Greg speak to it and then we can kind of weigh in. Has everybody had enough time to review it and comment? So um, it's basically just like I said, a continuation of the last discussion that we had. Uh, I was asked to put a value and what it would look like if we were to 
go to this system, um, what that would financially look like for uh, um, the different entities or the different residential units and commercial units. And so that's really all this is, is just there's, there's two or three actually columns at the end. Um, and the old cost is, is basically based off, that should really be current, I just have room to put all that on there. Uh, it's current cost, so that's, that's how it's broken down currently. And then the new is, is how it will be broken down based off of the new uh, EU calculation, um, as well as the increased EUs that you would see on the last page. So the per EU cost would go down because you would have more EUs. Right, more EUs in the bank. Uh, yeah. uh, and then the next one is just a, the plus minus difference on what that actually looks like to each account. Yep. Yep. So G I don't remember if Janice was here, but I mean, um, one of the comments that have come out quite a bit is is in regards to, um, you know, someone might be a, a single occupant of a structure um, and they're getting billed the same as a family of six right now, right? So one way of looking at this is to break it apart. And this EU calculation, what it does is breaks it apart into uh, bedrooms per home. Um, and we're just kind of exploring the idea to see where it was. So this, would, this structure here would break it into like one bedroom up to five bedrooms. Um, and then we play with the calculations. So it looks like right now um, the calculations would pretty much stay the same for a two bedroom. If you had a two bedroom home based on these calculations that the, your, your water rate would be pretty much the same, uh, give or take a couple dollars. Um, you would save a little bit if you had a one bedroom home um, but then anybody that has a three, four, or five bedroom home, it would go up. Um, I guess one concern that I had looking through this was, I don't know how we'd get the information for that, but you know how that would, it's one thing if you have a, a family of five that have a five bedroom home, but it's another thing to have a family of one with a five bedroom home, you know, and, and how would that look like? And I don't even know if we even have any data to figure that out. I mean, I, I have heard through the, the grapevine that at one point they used to send surveys out to everybody mm -hmm. that, were, that were water users. And then we would just bill them based off of whatever those, you know, the honesty of people, whatever they, they came back with as far as their, um, how many people were in the, in the residence. That's what I've heard. I don't know if that's the truth or not, but that's just what I've heard. That would kind of be what you'd have to do in, in this situation if you wanted to base it off of, of how many rooms were actually occupied, um, you'd have to send out, that's what we do to our commercial properties right now. Mm -hmm. We send out a, a survey every year, and then we assess the EUs based off of whatever, whatever they give us back for results. Because this calculations here, it looks like on average, you know, once you get above two bedrooms, two bedrooms is kind of the threshold even, and then like a three bedroom home would go up by almost 50%. A four bedroom home would be about 100% and the five bedroom home would be about 140% from what I saw in the calculations. Mm -hmm. It looked like all the commercial properties would decrease, decrease. by probably about a third is what I yeah. was looking at. Yeah. Um, Chris, whose idea was this to go back to that it, kind of a thought? It's just a model. Remember we talked about we're going to look at, you know, if it makes sense or not, we're going to look at everything. Um, and this was one of... Including water meters? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we were looking because at everything. It, so that, to me, seems to be the only fair and equitable way. Well, I mean, I would... We, you know, we're exploring <coughs> the water meters still. We have done research with the water meters prior, um, which didn't look favorable for the majority of the town. Um, this, this is another method that... No, no, but... ...stated that we're looking at as well. Meters. Using the water, would then pay for the water that they're using. The people who use very little water then would pay that amount, and I think that's the only fair and equitable way. Well, it's probably the most fair and equitable way, and it's probably the most efficient way for the town to manage water. But I can tell you, it would be by far the most expensive way for the residents of the town. When you say most expensive, you're talking about three hundred to three hundred fifty thousand dollars to town water meters to the town. On top of what your current costs are. Yep. Three. Well, that's the only way to go for the future. So, if you want to wait 
10 years, it will probably be 500,000. But eventually, you know, there's going to be water meters. So why not do it now? And so that it's fair and equitable for everyone. Be you know, because right now, the current system that we have in, in place, our current <laughs> policy and our current system is, is the most favorable for the town owners. Regardless if we like it or not, it is. And we are exploring these other ones. One last thing I cannot see where Barbara Hart, who pays one equivalent unit in a single wide trailer, who pays one equivalent unit, and Bethel Mills, who has 35 employees, plus everybody that goes in and out, plus hosing the trucks in, plays a unit and a half. That to me does not seem fair or equitable. It's the way the system is. I mean, but all I can say right now is, <clears throat> we, you know, we have promised the town um, taxpayers, you know, even when Carl was on the board, we, we started this long process of, well, first getting the cost control un underhand and now actually making sure that we are paying for the cost of the system, which we weren't for many years. And now that we have that under control, now we're looking at different methods of, of possible payments in the future. And it could be water meters, could be this this um, model that we're looking at here, could be the same model we're doing now, or it could be a uh, you know some sort of hybrid of a couple things. So um, you know we're just gonna keep working on this until something that makes sense and and that is favorable for the majority of the town. The only thing that makes sense, Chris, is water meters. And well, if Rochester, little Rochester, can yeah. do it, I don't see why we can't. Well, I think what we'll do once we go through this process. We uh, and we have all the data. Is we will publish it. Um, we'll put it out there on the town website where people can get this information and see for themselves. You know, maybe these three or four models that we're looking at, and what you know. That way, you can see this is how much water meters would cost you, or this is how much this EU system would cost you, or our current system, or maybe a hybrid of EUs and water meters for the commercial or something. You know, like. We're gonna we're gonna post it and then you can see for yourself. They do that in Winston. Yep. They have a hybrid. So I, I think just to get back to this one, I mean before we sent Greg with his homework assignment, I, I was thinking pretty good about it actually. You know, I thought it was kind of a decent system until he brought the numbers back and I'm thinking, well this isn't you know, isn't gonna be very fair to a person that lives by themselves and has a four bedroom home, yep. you know. Um, now, if you have a family and you have a four-bedroom home, that makes sense. But, um, yeah, but if you have a if you have a five-bedroom home and you shut off the second floor because you're only occupied by two people, right. you know. So I, and then I think what concerned me on this is that the that you know the rate at the commercial end of things basically the commercial businesses would would be in favor of this as it would reduce their cost by about a third, but it would overall increase the residents of the town about the, at least a third, based on the model that I see at hand. Greg, do you have <coughs> bottom line numbers, old versus new, or old system versus new cost? Is there like a bottom line total each? Uh, I don't. You mean what, what the increase would be? Increase yeah. or decrease would be yeah, overall? No. I, I don't. Okay. I can get that to you. Yeah, I don't think it's in that spreadsheet on the last page, is it? No. no I don't think so. No. No, I can get that and okay. let you know exactly oh. what. And again, these numbers are, are approximates, of course, because, you know, the EUs change here and there a little bit. But, um, but I could get you the, the overall what the difference looks like. <clears throat> I mean, not that it, <clears throat> it I mean, if, if it wasn't. It, too, if it wasn't too big of a deal to try and get the information, it would well, be it's not really a deal. I mean, I, I don't know what you're asking for totally, because what I did here was I, I basically did the same budget scenario that we we do in the past, where you take the EU, we take the budget, mm -hmm. and the known budgets were the same, whatever our water budget is for the year, and then you divide in the uh, the number of EUs that you have, and it gives you a per EU cost, and then all I did was go through and just uh, apply that per EU cost to the EU total. Right. to give me a cost. So, so at the end of the day, it's still coming up with the same number. So the old cost, if you total up all the old costs, it comes out to... The same as the new cost. It's still the budget. Dollars. And if you do the new cost, it would come out to the same number. They'd both come up to the same number. It's just a different way of coming in. Exactly. It's, it's the same bottom line as we have to come up. We have to get to the budget number. 
So that's what these right. both that's lines would add up to, to that. You've got to get to that target number. Yes, yes. I mean, it, it would, if it wasn't too much work, it would be, it would be interesting to actually see when you're talking about these different, you know, three, four, five bedroom homes, you know, what the, what the data of the family size is out of those homes. You know, if, you know, if 60% of our four bedroom homes are, only have two people living in them, but maybe that's not, you know, We'd have to put out wouldn't be very favorable, but if maybe 80% of our four bedroom homes actually have four or more people in it, then maybe that is something to look at, you know, because you are technically using more water in your home. Um, I and don't know how we get all the information. Well, survey. You, you send the survey out and you yeah. look for, what, 20% yeah. is a good number usually to get back. Yeah. So, I mean, we can do a survey if you'd like right? and just see if we can get, see what kind of response we get. Yeah, yeah I mean, other than that, I didn't. This isn't set in stone, it's just an option. No, no yeah, just looking no, at it. Yeah, it's just looking, just a different be, way to I'd look at something. I'd be curious to see if we installed water meters, the uh -huh. DEU would be on that. You know, the cost of our water meters, or how that figured out on another. <laughs> sure. Well, we've already calculated, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but we've calculated what the, the fixed costs of the system are. Right. And it came up to, I want to say, 81 or 82 percent of the overall cost of the system. Right, I knew that. And so that, that would essentially, that would be your, your EU number. Right. Would be that fixed cost. By, what I'm getting at is by adding the water meters in. Oh, sure. You know, that's going to change that. Sure. That figure tremendously right. because that goes right. into the. We would then have a bond payment cost. the payment, right. Yeah, right. I'd be curious to see what that figure would be for. Um, well, we could get a guess because I think they went out. They actually didn't go out to bid but before I started it. There was, there was a time when they went out and got a number. For meters, I want to say it was about four hundred pounds, so or somewhere in there. You can estimate. On and then, well, yeah, we can do that and put that on a um, amortization table and just kind of see to install the whole system. Oh, I know you did that fifteen hundred pounds. But for the whole system, I think Keith had either I think Keith had actually applied for or had contemplated applying for a um, state revolving fund loan for that. So there's a number out there that we can get. We can then we'll look and see at you know what that payback would be. Know what that would be per year um, and add that to the fixed cost and come back to the number that's going to drive the fixed cost tremendously high it, it would it'll drive it up some yep. yeah because you know the users are going to have to bear that cost exactly but um but i can do that if you want me to we can i've got that's uh, i got the numbers nice. so it's just a matter of putting them together well it's just another factor another element yeah yeah and, and you know that's the thing with the meters that we keep talking about is that um meters are are equitable as far as knowing how much water people are using and and they're being billed on how much water they're using but there's also that base fee there's a base charge of right. those fixed costs that it would cost to produce that water regardless of whether or not it was used and that would be kind of our base fee that everybody would have to pay and i think that's where your question's coming that's in. right what would that base fee look like yeah but yeah. you'd also need a, a reader a meter you had to have a meter reader yeah. Yeah. yeah we have it going to the computer now has anybody ever gone over to rochester to ask them how they do it no but i've worked in many towns with water meters i can tell you there's about 14 different ways to do it you yeah. can manually do it you can do it through a, a system of like she's talking about where you've got a like GMP. one or two or three fixed locations depending on what sort of bandwidth you have yeah you can read them that way. Um, but the you can go by and touch pad. And depending on how you read them, the cost goes up. If it's if it's yeah. computerized, then the costs are astronomical because that's the highest price meters there are. Um, yeah, in the long term, it's not. It's cheaper to do it with right. the satellite, but in the short term, yeah. Yeah, but you've you got a larger upfront, upfront cost. cost. Yeah. Can I just ask the question? Why does anybody go over Rochester? Well, we will. I mean, through this process. I mean, we've talked with other local towns. Um, Carl. But just in terms of the other costs of the system, in terms of maintenance, improving the pipes that are in place, and, and ensuring water quality, um, and putting money into the um, reservoirs and so forth, um, the, the half a million dollars for water meters isn't going to improve those features at all, is it? True, right. And so if you're going to you prior, prioritize increasing the cost of the system by $500,000, um, you could put that into improving your underground distribution system and improving the quality of your water storage system right. before you would um, 
necessarily benefit from something like yeah. water meters. Absolutely, and but we have our water master plan. master plan that we, it's finished, it's sitting at the state right now, we're waiting for the state's Final review. comments, and, and then we'll be able to, I mean, that's the most logical way of doing things, is to make sure that we take care of our, our water delivering mechanism first. Um, but, you know, we're, we're also exploring with the payment end of things, too. And, it's um, not hard to have 350,000 <clears throat> Well, we're going we're gonna to redo it, so it could be 300, could be more, it could be less. Um, I mean, I think oh, what like I'd like to see is us to do, you know, if we're going to compare these things, we might as well compare them. And I think it, it would be, and I think we have the information if we went town-wide with the meters. Mm -hmm. How much that would be. sure, but That's the other one that we may want to look at is based on the current system that we have in place, the current EU, EU system. What if we just metered the commercial properties? What that would be? I mean, that might be a like a hybrid type look to take a look at. But does anybody on the board have any other I have a, options they'd like to? Well, I have a question about the calculations. Yeah. I don't want to nope. derail where we were going. Um, so one thing that I noticed, Greg, and I was wondering if you could just speak to it a little bit, is um, for apartment buildings, a lot of those dropped right. by this because they're going by, by bedroom. And I'm wondering if that's actually logical in terms of this type of calculation. Because if you have three apartments, three people cooking dinner, three people running their dishwasher is different than a one family with three bedrooms. But it's right. being calculated the same. So I don't know if there's a a better system or an, an alternative calculation that apartment buildings would get that right. because it doesn't it doesn't seem logical to this system and if that would if adding that in would then drop the single family homes it, it in would, a bit of a way it would because yeah you because that's what we're currently doing is each unit regardless of one bedroom two bedroom three bedroom if it's a separate rental unit it's a EU of a one right now right and what this does is it it breaks it down into how many bedrooms it has so it, that's why you're seeing that reduction there. If we went back to the basically each unit, well, we'd have to we'd have to figure that because right now each unit is based off of bedroom sizes, and that's what this is based off of anyway. Mm -hmm. So there'd have to be some sort of a of a hybrid, if that's the word we're using yeah. tonight, um, to go with that number. I mean, it can be done, right. but everything here is based off of. Um, off of bedrooms. Right, and I recognize you, you sort of put this all into one type of calculation. Right, it's all, exactly. It's, all, it's all meant to stay kind of consistent with the state, uh, with some of their, their newer that they're using or that they're talking about using. It's kind of the, that's what it followed. Right. Um, but I, I, I get your, your logic on that. If there's, you know, four kitchens, then a kitchen and a, and a, a family in a one bedroom is going to use a lot more than a, a teenage kid up in their bedroom hanging out right. or whatever yeah well and similarly like chris's point about just how um a lot of the commercial properties dropped but it's a you know 50 to 100 percent or more increase for a, a single family residential right. just sort of trying to think through balancing that out a bit that that's a that's a big burden to ask a single family to increase to when you're dropping the right. commercial rates and they're probably one of the bigger users um, and there may be a you may be able to offer a different commercial rate or calculation sure. to make that uh, it's something we can go more through. balanced. Yeah. But if if we just hypothetically, let's say we went with a type of calculation like this, it's based on a system that the state is recommending. Do we have to do everybody on the same type of calculation, or could we have residential as one and commercial as another? As water commissioners, you can set it however you want to set it. Okay. Now, how well that stands up in a court of law. I don't know, um, but you have the, the ability and the liberty to, to set the rates however you feel you know, best, best does it, I guess. So um, we can work through whatever you want us to work through. And, you know. um, this is solely, like I said, solely kind of based on the newest table that's in the water supply rule. And this is taking it to the letter, exactly how it's set. And it breaks down um, multifamilies, if, like apartment units and all that. It says calculate by bedrooms. It doesn't talk about individual kitchens and things like that. So that's just that's what this follows. Um, but I mean, I'm all for some sort of a of a hybrid kind of a thing that that 
makes it as fair as possible. I think we all agree that it's nothing's a magic bullet by any means, but um, I think we all want to be as fair and as, as equitable as we can be, for sure. So yeah, just let me know. Let me know what kind of ideas you have, and we can all run the numbers. Yeah, we're just looking at options now, and it's nothing's yeah. cast in stone. No. Right, right. And again, it's, it's you know, 80% or 82% of the system is already paid for. I mean, there's really not much that we can change Regardless, you know, we're only talking, we're dealing with 18 to 20 percent of the pie. You know, the system itself is already fixed, you know, and if you go to whatever it is, if it's going from vacancy to not or whatever, I mean, you get to pay for the 80 percent. Right. You know, we're only talking about maybe trying to better the 18 to 20 percent, which may cost us way more money to do that. So, um, but it's fair. I mean, we've, we've tackled the cost and the things, and now we're going to tackle the payment. Mm -hmm. so. But then finally that would put it to rest because it would be fair and equitable for everyone. Yeah. So anybody have any else uh, discussion on the new EU proposal that we would look at? I mean I guess I guess I would be curious to see what what that alternate would look like with the apartments. And I don't I don't know if it's going if it's putting them back on the one we looked at last week. For just commercial properties, so apartments and you know businesses, mm -hmm. um, but still you know like you said coming down to the same bottom line of what the cost of water is. I just think it'd be interesting to compare um, compare that with sure. what that would do with the residential rates on this new calculation as they are. And I, I, that's piece cake. I can bring okay. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's just a couple yeah. clicks. I can do that. And so I would basically go as. We would keep the, the, I think I called it new EUs, the new cost or the new calculation um, for the single families would stay the same, the actual EU calculation. We're talking not the money. The EU calculation would stay the same except the multifamilies would be charged. Um, hmm. I'd have to work through it. Because right now they're charged per bedroom and so are single families. Right. So how do you charge, are you proposing that each unit is a one? Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what I'm proposing. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> I don't know that, how, to, yeah. how to make that. I mean, so, so currently they are one EU per unit, right? Per That's, unit. Just like, and a single family is a one EU, regardless of how big it is. Right, and so, yeah. Come on and see me, let's talk about it. <laughs> well, I'm sure we can at yeah. least put something on paper. Yeah. Keep just, this moving in the right direction. Well, it's kind of curious that, that uh, a bathroom, I mean, a bedroom is being used as a measure of water usage when it's clearly a kitchen or a bathroom. This is where the water is being used. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and their theory, I think. It could be focusing more on the facilities that are designed to be using water and the number of people that are using those facilities. And that's one of the ways that I've done this in the past, too, is we've done it by fixture count. I've actually gone into, I haven't gone in, but we've done a survey or, or during building permit or whatever, you, we assess the water rates based off of their fixture count. Because like Carl said, that's, that's really where the water consumption is. Uh, what the state is saying through this table is they're saying that the use is, or the, the consumption is, is a byproduct of the use. So like the gas stations, I always bring this example up. It says that I have to charge, or the calculation is like 500 gallons of water for the first pump at a gas station. Well, we know that the pump itself, they're not watering their gas now. You know, it's not using the water. It's those secondary uses of people coming in and they're using the bathroom or they're making sandwiches to eat or whatever. That's where the consumption actually comes in. So that's kind of the concept here is that if there's somebody inhabiting a room and staying there, they assume. But I, I mean, there's like I said, there's 14 different ways to do this. We can look at, at fixture counts. We can look and do a survey and hope that we get some accurate numbers back on how many people are actually in the home. You know, but that's going to change. What if, what if you yeah. did, so essentially break, you know, if you have a, a three-unit apartment building, if you treated each one of those as a sub a subunit, so you're treating it as an individual home, so if it's a one-bedroom apartment, it's calculated with this new calculation as a one-bedroom apartment in that apartment building. So it's like you have the one, one line with three subcategories mm -hmm. for each apartment. If it's a two-bedroom apartment, then it's calculated as a two-bedroom. Numbers will come out the same.
Would they if you're calculating them? Because you're calculating them three times. Yeah, but you're doing, so the calculation is basically 150. So the way it reads is that every bedroom assumes an occupancy of two people, which is 150 gallons per day. Mm -hmm. uh, that's every bedroom. So if you have a three bedroom, the calculation is the same. If you have a three bedroom house, the calculation is the same as if you have three rental one bedroom rental units. It's still a 150, 150, and 150. But I think what Lindley's trying to say is that the uh, a three apartment building would be different because they, as other people have said, there'd be a kitchen. You know. Right. So, so that each apartment would be classified as a, like a separate house. So the right. problem is just trying to quantify that. Right. You know, if we go back to this, we can revert back to this one number, which is where we are now. But if you try to quantify it based on the table, it's still a 150. If it's a one bedroom, if you have a three bedroom house, that's that's 450. If you have three one bedroom apartments, that's 450. Okay. Even though they're broken up differently, it's still at the end of the day, it's the same number. I see what you're saying. I think also one of the other things that's confusing is it's based on rental, um, on an assumption of rental, not on not actually on usage. So when you put, hook a five bedroom house to your system, you are hooking up a potential usage. So you're renting water to supply that facility. And when we, we start going back down the road toward the meter concept, everybody wants to know how much how many gallons go through this house. But it's not really the, the, the reason why you have an equivalent unit system is because um, you could have a house with five, five bedrooms, but you only have one person in it. But you still have the potential. Right. of using five bedrooms worth of water. Right. And it, it's, it's a lot like listing the value of your home. You, you pay a certain value of your home whether you've painted the outside of it or not. Because it, it do, may not look like a $100,000 home, but it's a $100,000 home because of how it's built and where it's located. So it's a, it's a different um, way of appraising value. And that's when you get back to that point that Chris was making about the 18% of the actual cost of delivering water to these homes. Um, that's where that equivalent concept comes in, is you're just trying to create a, 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 um, a comparative measure so that this home is, is, has a rate that's comparatively different to this home based on the potential that that structure has when it's hooked to that system. It all so. seems so complicated, yeah. you know, when, when the easiest way to be would be to have a water meter. And it probably would, but the, the, again. You know, it's like, it, 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 it by far would be the easiest for the, the town. By far for the town would be the easiest, no doubt, because you put a water meter in everybody's house, you're going to be able to, the town's going to be able to dictate, the, you know, how much water they have to clean to, to deliver to your house. But what's going to end up doing, it's going to raise everybody's everybody's gonna go up. But then every, then Bethel Mills would be paying for what Bethel Mills uses. Maybe, but then you might be paying twice of what you're paying now. No, because I have a 96 year old mother and myself. But that's the way it is. Then I have one tenant in the apartment and the other one is not rented at the time. So that would alleviate the next thing on the agenda the about the occupancy. The eighty percent of your cost is going to go up. Right. Right. So it's your overall, right. your overall now, cost is going to go. Is going but to we're going to we're going to we're going to we're going to go through it. Else and as we do it, or as we complete these, you know, uh, potential proposals, we'll we'll find a way of seeing how we can put it on the website or whatever for yeah. people to look at. If we went water meters, we would need the EU system because there would be a. Our costs would be divided into gallons. You use X number of gallons, the total cost would be on that one gallon of water, correct? No. Well, your consumption you. would be, but your, your fixed cost would not be. Yeah, but I mean, you'd take your fixed cost and everything would be lumped together to what it costs to produce that one gallon of water to a, to a fixed <clears throat> No. You can't do it that no. way? No. Why not? That's a whole other discussion we need to have. Okay. <laughs> but the the model is that you take your fixed cost and right. that's your base rate and your base rate can include for the low the low users a little bit of water maybe it's three thousand gallons or whatever but your base rate is all your fixed costs so you take those and you'll divide those through your users typically you divide them up based on the meter size yep. so if you've got a larger meter you're going to pay more yep. of your base cost 
because you, like Carl said, you've got the potential for more water. Yeah. Um, and then the remainder of that is that variable that are, that are those, those variable costs based on the consumption. And that's what the, the, the meter, the user would pay that's kind of variable. Would be I, that. Was, I was just being a devil's advocate. I know, I know. I mean, your thought, the, the problem with the theory there, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, but the problem with that is, is that it's, it's such a variable as far as how much water is being used that we would never be able to budget for it. Because you never, you never know if you're going to hit your number and you could be way under, you could be way over. It just depends on what, how much water people's using, people yeah. are using. So that's really tough to, to budget and actually stay on par for. Anything from the board left on this? Discussion. Have you taken a look at you got here the old cost and the new cost? Are the old cost on the buildings that actually have meters? Is that the number, or did you use the EU and the calculation? That is the number that they that they pay, and that does not include their um, their consumption. So if they've got a meter, the way it works now, if you have got a meter, um, we read they read the meter every month or every quarter, I guess it is. And then we run a calculation that basically says, okay, you're given based on this calculation, 150 gallons per day per EU that you're paying for. So we do that calculation and say, okay, well, you have two EUs. So there's a, a credit, if you will, of so many gallons that you're credited for your EU calculation. And then anything above that, you're charged on our, our okay. rate. So much per thousand gallons. So much per thousand gallons. Um, but that additional usage is not in here. It's just the EU calculation. We good for tonight. I'd like to get to uh, Alex is here, so his appointment's at 6:15. So if we could go back into the future, <laughs> we'll get you on time. I'm actually not with the AED, but I'm with the Ramblers. Okay. And uh, what I'm looking for is permission for the road road use that we've used for crossings and class fours and small stretches of class three road. Um, Basically, it's unchanged from last year, except for one small section of the Falls Peak. We've, we're actually running less road there than we used to, about 25% of, of what we used to run on that road. Um, I have a town map. I've marked every place on here that we that we're running, um, and everywhere that we're crossing, and there's also a brief description of all the crossings and road use areas that we're using. Uh, just looking for permission for the 18, 19 solid season. So it sounds like it's pretty much identical footprint as last year. Actually, Except it'll be on the like lesser. Of... Less road. Yep. <laughs> okay. We're trying to get off all of them, but um, some of the, the class four are going to, you know, obviously that, that's going to stay, but any of the class three stuff that we run a pretty long stretch of Finley Bridge Road, and we're going to try to reroute and get off of that. We, we don't like running roads anymore than we have to. It's not good for machines. But Anybody from the board have any questions in regards to that? Thank you. I would entertain a motion to allow the Snowmobile Club to continue the footprint that they have from last year um, with the slight modifications on the new map. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All set. I appreciate you getting the map and stuff to us as well. So. I thought it was interesting. I saw ATV Club and I was thinking, well, there must be something going on because that's not usually the time of year we talk about that. But <laughs> makes more sense now. All right. Well, thank you. All right. We um, next on we had the also last time we were talking about because we had um, a couple of uh, business owners come to us recently in regards to um, vacancy commercial um, properties um, through the new water policy we. We took out the vacancy rate for commercial properties in regards to water. <clears throat> At the time, basically our thinking was a majority of the properties, it's, it's hard to just discontinue service at one apartment inside that whole complex. So it was just easy to, to take it completely out of the calculations. 
um, and just say no vacancy rate for, for commercial properties. However, there are a, a small limited amount of potential up and coming businesses or some that might be in the process of being sold that maybe a vacancy rate could apply to them. So um, I believe Paul, Paul, yeah, I just, I, I, <coughs> took the liberty of take us drafting, drafting up something that, that we might be able to apply in, in these cases. Um, you know, we have to realize that every, every decision that we make regarding these cases, um, you know, has potential ramifications. So I thought, I felt that if we had a, you know, a policy more or less that we could apply to these situations equally, um, whenever they come up, uh, then we, we will never go wrong in equally applying these things. So what I was thinking was that at the discretion and approval of the water commissioners, building classified as commercial can have its water and sewer rates fixed at the vacancy rate for that building if the building meets the following requirements. Um, the building must be totally unoccupied. Uh, town must be able and will shut off the water at the curb stop. And then a timetable for returning the building to regular building rates must be established by the owner with the town. Uh, timetable will be reviewed on a regular schedule to be determined by the town manager. And um, I thought the, the reduced rate should be in effect for no longer than a year. So we kind of put some kind of a, of an, of an end to it. Unless we um, come down and, and decide again to um, extend it out further, uh, further time period than that. That's basically what we did for McCullough, right? In some ways. I mean, we didn't put him on a vacancy rate. No, but we kind of more treated his property as, um, you know that he's making an enhancement to right. the the village area, and we're giving him kind of in a way like a you know a, a grant to mm -hmm. get his business his building up and going in a short period of time by relieving him of his water rate for that period. But I mean, I, I would. I, I mean, I'm either way. I I don't think it. I no. think it's good if we put it in place, and if not, yeah. it, it. I don't think there's a lot of buildings that it would technically fall under like complete you know nothing's going on there you know um, <clears throat> I guess the one thing I, I just had uh, put in here under the bullet point number two where the town must be able to and um, will shut off the water is just we'd have to put some language in there in regards to um, you know following our current vacancy rate procedure which entitles paying $25 to have your water shut off you know that whole that whole procedure there. Um, of course, the thing that really bothers, you know, worries me is the whole part of got to locate the water shut off because, you know, that's still a bit of an issue where we have some buildings that we still don't know where those water shut offs are. And then um, you're, then you're uh, saying you can't get the, the rate if you can't find it, and we are responsible for that curb stop. Mm -hmm. Their responsibility starts after the curb stop. Right. Ours, so they shouldn't have to be held accountable for the fact the town can't find the curb stop. No. Oh, we're, and that's oh, definitely... We're not, we're not holding them. Yeah, no, it wouldn't hold them, it would hold us. I mean, we would... If you're not going to give them the uh, vacancy rate if you're not able to and shut off the water. So maybe it should say the town will oh, shut yeah. off the water. Yeah, I see what you're saying, Dave. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We take that part out of a requirement phase. And whether or not we turn it off or not is, is mm -hmm. up to us. Yep. If we can or not. Yeah. And again, I mean, when we're looking at this, I mean, a, a one EU building right now, if there is a one EU building, there probably isn't, but one EU building is what, $116 or something, right? So if they went on vacancy rate, it's not like they would go back to the $25 days. They would right. be paying, they would be paying, you know, $90. Plus, plus they would have to pay the $25 to have the water turned off. You know, at the end of the day, I really don't know how much they would benefit to having it off. It might be better just to keep it on and pay, you know, 100% of it, you know. But, I mean, I guess it's an option. Well, usually the, the commercial accounts are higher than when you accounts. Not necessarily. No. Uh, not if you have a small business or something that's, it's not. Hmm. Like, I'm sure Actually, that, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I'm sure, like, probably the hardware store, for instance, is probably a one EU. Well, yeah, and we actually, the, the minimum is a 1EU anyway. 
Yeah. So, so the, the businesses that are less than that are one EU. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, if you had you know Dylan's place up here, that's right. probably what three or something or more. Yeah. You know, Every he would have to pay it. three times the the vacancy rate. Maybe at the end of the day, he's saving himself twenty or thirty dollars a quarter, but it's not a lot of money. Right. You know. The, the other thing, I, I was talking with Therese about this, and the only concern that she had is currently our, our water budget for the 2019 budget is calculated based upon the current policy that we have. Mm -hmm. So if we were to make an addendum to the commercial policies on having, being able to take advantage of the vacancy rate, it could, you know, have a negative, slight negative impact to revenue shortfall, you know, if all of a sudden a bunch of people jumped on, which I doubt that that would happen, you know, you know, you might only have a couple accounts that would do that, but, you know, she just recommended if we did do this, that maybe we would set it at a, you know, July 1st type, you know. And there's a process for this anyway. This, this has to be warned and it has to go through, you know, public meetings and all that too, so it's, it's not an immediate Oh, no, 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 not tonight. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying yeah. there's a little bit of time yeah. inherently oh, no, just as a process. It's yeah. just a thought to try to get some uniformity in when these situations come up. Right. Um, did so you, you, we, you know, well, we did, we did it one, we did it this way for one person, and we had, you know, why can't you do it this way for the other person? Well, we'd have to um, follow president for you know, whatever way, you know, if, if we give it to one person and uh, we say case by case, we'd have to refer back how we did it to the right. previous and, person. And I think that's why Paul wants to have something in writing right. that you can you can review and you know I think we ought to also I'm not real sure what the how they define commercial in our ordinance so we'd, we'd probably want to look at that and see yeah. and make yeah. sure that that's well defined. Yeah, yeah we got time till July. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we have time till July. So it's a good start. Yep. And yeah. Do you want to what's the board think about maybe making some changes to it and Kind of keep moving with it. Well, I think that we brought up some things that could be rewritten and then look at it again. Yep. Add in what Chris is talking about. I'd like to see number two changed a little bit. That was my concern. Do you guys want a copy of Paul's language included with this week's minutes? Is I don't think so. Works? No, no, I, I okay. think it, um, Paul and I or whoever will sit down with yeah, it and okay. we'll yeah. revise it and we'll bring it back. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? All right. Moving on. Take it you're probably here for Winterberry Lane closure. Um, Greg, do you want to start um, start this or Carl, no? Do you, you, talk do you all her? know Carl? <laughs> uh, so you know Carl uh, is here to talk about um, a temporary shutdown of Winterberry. Uh, they did some. He can explain in more in depth, but I think there was some logging operations that were done up there, and they've they've done a lot of work to to remediate the area, and, and they want to keep people off of it temporarily so they can so that they can get back to to where it needs to be. So. Carl, take it away. So Winterberry Lane and Fort Platte Road that goes bridges between Gilead Brook Road and Trout Brook Road. Um, and in the center of the property belongs to James De Palma, the forestry client of mine. And prior to that, it was um, Joe and Colette or Mundy. And uh, there, in their forestry, uh, plans they develop a network of roads, one of which um, it circumvents a section of the fourth class road that washed out um, in the 70s. And it's been used uh, publicly for ever since then. Um, but it, uh, and Greg came out and visited, we were looking at the, at the roadway and I showed him the, the gully that is through the woods that is in fact matches up with the town map for the fourth class road. So um, the, the Snow Machine Club uh, has offered to have machinery work and to place culverts in two stream crossings and to pay and to put the time into 
uh, remediating the private portion of the log road um, because over the last 10 years, maybe even a little, but anyway, over the last, the, the recent past, that road has become extremely eroded because of the public use of it. And um, so the Bast Club has, very, has, has a lot of difficulty using the trail, as does the private landowner. So the operator of my recent timber harvest has his equipment in there, and he offered to be the one to, uh, while he was closing out the timber sale for me, doing road uh, maintenance, that he offered to, to do this road maintenance for the, to benefit the fourth class, I mean, to benefit the snow machine club. And based on the town policy, uh, I talked with Greg because we wanted to replace one failed culvert and another um, culvert that was poorly placed. And so the town supplied us with the culverts and we've uh, altered a section of the town highway to improve the water uh, dispersal. And then we've improved the section of the private road and I included a map. I, hopefully, I also hopefully described it well enough for you. Uh, so it's just been done. Yesterday and today, the road work was done, and as you can imagine, it's freshly disturbed um, woods dirt. It's it's not. It is a road, but it's not road material. Uh, in fact, yesterday there were uh, the, this morning or today when I walked through, there's evidence from yesterday of three four-wheelers and two dirt bikes. Um, the dirt bikes helping themselves to the private roads to get around the construction zone. Uh, right up, up right up our logging trail that the operator had just back dragged and, and water barred to, as part of his uh, reclamation of his uh, performance bond. So uh, what we would, what we intend to do is break, is to block off the private section of the road and not allow any more vehicular traffic until the road is is sol has become solid again. And the problem with that is, based on the map, you can see is that there is no adequate turnaround uh, for the public when they have reached the portions of the private road. Uh, and then all we're doing is inviting uh, public use of our private network of roads. Um, which is unacceptable, and we're going to do what we can to to eliminate that. But uh, the work that we have done to the public portion of the right of way will also be impacted by uh, its fresh dirt around two culverts right now. So that would be pretty easily disturbed by just a couple of jeeps. So what I was what I'm asking is if the select board would consider a temporary road closure. Uh, where Winterberry Road hits Troutbrook Road, there's a, uh, there's a town-made uh, turnaround where the plows turn around. It's the end of the third class road where it turns from third class to fourth class. Um, to, to close it off there for, to vehicular traffic. And then on the private, uh, on below the, the primary culvert, there's a private log landing, which is a, is a good and adequate turnaround. Um, and that would be the other portion for the, for the public closing of the road. Well, we could close it at either end of the private property, um, but I thought that that was a section that was, that's the, that is the section that has been impacted by our construction that we want to, want to protect. And like I said, the, the, as long as there's snow and frozen ground, the, that meets the criteria for Bast, right? Mm. To, to open your trails. Yeah. So that would be um, that would be appropriate. That would be appropriate vehicular use during that period of time, um, and then presumably it would be solid after mud season, and could be reopened to public vehicular use. So your current proposal, Carl, would be to to close it. I don't know how soon you can close the road, how much time you have to yes. give motors, but. Yes, to, to close it as soon as To possible. close it and then reopen it after mud season. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at. Do you have anything to close it with, signs or anything? Or would we, we um, can get it. Well, what I'm that. asking for is official uh, yeah. town signage so that uh, it bolsters our, because okay. I, I can put, I actually will be making 
private property signs to prevent to try to prevent public use right. of the private roads until they uh, are so, but that doesn't give me any authority yeah. against people who want to use the road and claim that it's a fourth class road. So, so we could get it, but I imagine by the end of the week, we could get it done. So it we're we would we would get some rope or something. Yeah, to, kind to, of temporary. Yeah. yeah, and then just all you, all we would need from the town would be an official statement of uh, authorizing the temporary road closure, and, and if you had the dates on there, it would be I mean informative sure. to the public so they know that they could reuse the road. Yep. You know. Are there any immediate residents that would be impacted negatively? In James De Palma owns the property inclusive of this entire section of the road that okay. I'm talking about. His property line ends right at the cul-de-sac at the top of at the bottom of Trout Brook Road, and he his property closes the, the log landing that I pr propose for the turnaround. Okay. So. Uh, it will impact a lot of people, though. Um, you know, look, there are a lot of people that use that road and have used it for mm -hmm. generations. So I'm, I know we will um, have people concerned about the fact that that is closed to traffic, particularly during the deer season. So. What's your recommendation, Greg? Uh, I, I think we're better doing it than, than not. It sounds like, I mean, there's a lot of work that went in up there. Um, the town, like I said, there's two new culverts that are up there now. Um, so, I mean, there's a significant amount of work up there that's been done. I hate to see it to the left. I'd hate to see it you know, get torn up for sure. Um, this time of year, I don't know how much activity you're really gonna, gonna see up there other than the snow machines, Jeeps and all that. Deer, I don't know. deer season rivalry. Is that a big, is it? Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so, I mean, you know, from a, from a, from a, you know, like an engineering, if you will, about whatever it's, I mean, of course we don't wanna disturb any new work that's been done until they can, you know, that culvert's placed in there in a certain, grade and everything so if we if it were damaged or whatever I don't even know how much cover you got over it it was pretty we shallow got, before we got, no, I, yeah, we got pretty close to the cover. did you okay so that's not a big <laughs> issue but, but but with the dirt that's over it it won't take a three quarter ton pick up right and yeah it, that's the big issue it's just a fairly you shallow culvert your ruts and then the water yeah. goes in there and, and the other I remember the other culvert it was broke on top because yeah. of the traffic on top of it so okay. my opinion would be just I mean you know I'd like to see that it's left alone until it's can be driven on and can be used for what it's supposed to be used for later. Okay. That'd be my opinion. Yeah. So. It wouldn't and be the only one in town. What's that? I mean, it wouldn't be the only one in town. We have one on top of the mountain. We close every year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and as I described, um, we are going to be closing off the private portion. So they, they, we won't, there won't be through traffic even if you don't close off the town right. portion. But by us doing that, we're then inviting impact onto our private property without your assistance. So yeah. It's sort of a quid pro quo because we don't, I, I hung up a sign about 15 years ago that thanked the public for using the private portion of the road uh, with respect. So we've set the precedent that we know where, our private, where the private road is and where the public road is. Um, and we're going to protect that. So as long as we allow public use throughout the year, I think it benefits both of us to, to close off a bigger piece. Well, I would entertain a motion to uh, temporarily close the sections outlined by Carl's um, proposal here for Winterberry Lane, um, effective immediately until after mud season. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it, barely. <laughs> Emphatically. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't like I don't like mud season. No, I, like, I like a date. I think April first. Well they had yeah. they had between April and May, which you know, I mean if it's late oh. April and you got another couple weeks to get out of mud season, you'd probably rather Wait, keep it cold. Isn't there an April 15th day on that other road closure? I think so. Yeah, I mean, that's all yeah. I yeah. So we'll do it as April 15th, is that? April 15th, fine. I think it's, yeah, I think it's appropriate. Okay. It's a, it's a
consolidate his vehicle. Yep. At that point, you might discover that it still needs to be closed for a while, too. Right. And it could be in our discussion. Yeah, and help knock down. Yeah. Yeah. down. So I'll just get you a couple of letters then, kind of laminated letters with some signage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The letters would be great. And, uh, okay. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's a good sort of standard way of telling both and so. Yeah. 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 No, I'm sure I'll, we'll find some. I'll just uh, I'll, I'll I'll get them to you. Yeah. And then you can work if you need something from us. Just work with Alan. Yeah. And we'll get you squared away. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Thank you. All right, moving along. Uh, Greg, has got uh, something on here for the Kubota snowblower attachment. Yeah, so there should be some pictures in your uh, packet there. Uh, I was working with, so we, you know, we, we have kind of, we have a new position that we will be working downtown, working on the sidewalks downtown and the parking lot and uh, some of the paved roads. And um, it occurred to me one day when I was walking around at the shop, the, the public workshop that there was a Kubota tractor sitting there and it hadn't been used for a while and we I had the guys get that thing out and start working on it and lo and behold it seems to run okay mm -hmm. uh, the mower deck is, is in bad shape but everything else seems to work just fine on it. so uh, I talked to Morgan about it a little bit and he said what well, you know I'd love to run that thing on our sidewalks because it's got chains on the back it's you know it's got more oomph to it it's uh, PTO driven for the snowblower if we had a snowblower, he said, I can do it way faster. I can quit because that, that other machine we use, it gets stuck all the time. It rolls over all the time. It throws belts all the time. It's just, it's just too small. Uh, it mows really well, but it doesn't plow and it, it doesn't, it doesn't blow snow at all. It's a plow. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening on the sidewalks and, and I'm sure you can attest is that we end up with a big, huge windrow at the curb line because we're not throwing the snow. It's just being piled up with, with a blade. So um, I asked Morgan to, to see what he could do about finding a, an attachment, a snowblower attachment for that machine, that tractor, because uh, he thinks he can use that tractor a lot better than that other machine. He can navigate it in and out um, all the way down the sidewalks from one end to the other. He's, he's real confident that he can do it the whole way down. Um, the plan for that, his plan initially, and we'll see how the snow goes, is to, as he's doing the downtown area, he will plow the streets with his truck, but he'll also, um, shoot the snow if he has his machine he would shoot all of the snow off the sidewalks on into that extra lane that we have that that drive that parking lane and then he'll come back with his v-plow and he'll move all that snow somewhere to a corner somewhere um if he has the other machine the problem is it's it's, it's a windrow so if he can't get that snow you'll still have that windrow you'll have a clear sidewalk and a clear parking stall but you'll have a big windrow here this allows him to actually shoot that snow and get that snow out of there um, he went and looked, we found that this used piece of equipment, um, it's at, I don't have my card on me, but it's, it's, I don't know if it says in there where it came from. I didn't see anything. No, I've got a card for the guy. He's, he's local within the, probably a hundred miles. It's not a long ways away, but um, Morgan actually went down and looked at this, this piece of machinery. He said, it, it looks great. It's not too rusted. It's, it's a little old, you know, but it's not brand new. Uh, it functions just fine. It runs off the, the, the PTO on the Kubota tractor, and uh, it's got enough oomph to, to push a, a pretty hefty amount of snow and kick it out off the sidewalk and into the, the parking lane. Um, it's $2,000. Uh, the reason why I'm here today is I, I do not have $2,000. Uh, so I'm asking that the board, if you would be interested or willing to uh, appropriate those $2,000 out of the, the highway equipment fund. Uh, we did this with tires before. Uh, and I know that fund is not, you know, it's not just there for, for picking and taking little pieces, but um, I'm a big advocate of having all of our equipment running when we can, and this tractor is just sitting there. And to be honest with you, it's a better piece of equipment than that little thing that we have now. Um, especially for snow removal, it's a, it's a lot better piece of equipment. Uh, so this would allow us to, to not only use that piece of machinery, but I think it's gonna increase our efficiency because it's gonna be able to push that snow and get it where it needs to be. Uh, it's, it's a bigger machine. It's going to be able to push more snow in general. Um, it's going to get stuck a lot less. It's, it's not going to throw belts all over the place like the other one has. Um, so I think it'll allow him to, to be able to keep up a little bit more with everything else he's going to be doing. Because he's going to be a busy kid. He's got a lot of work to do when the snow, when the snow flies. Um, so I'm trying to, to get him the, the best equipment I can and, and allow him to get as much done as he possibly can. So 
Um, so that's what this is. It's, it's a snowblower attachment for the Kubota tractor. Is that a five foot? Um, you know, I don't know. It's it's, it's sitting on a pallet. It looks like. It's yeah, it yeah, could be. I, the first the question I asked Morgan was. Yeah. The first question I asked him was, "Can you will it navigate down through?" Yeah. He said, like "Yeah, oh yeah, because he's done it with that tractor before, not with this, but with a, a plow." Right. Um, and he said, "Yeah, I can. This thing will go all the way down through. He won't get stuck. There's no obstructions. He can make it from one end to the other, all the way out in front of the houses, you know, down there." Um, that was the first question I asked because I it seemed like it was kind of. It's hard to navigate down through town here, uh, but he's confident that he can have he can use this all the way down through. Um, so again, you know the the concept here with with this new position, part of that was that we wanted to improve kind of the services downtown, get that snow out of there, so we're not having windrows and problems with people tripping and all that. This to me is just just another step in that that process. Um, get that snow out of that drive lane so that or into that parking lane so that he can come back and and push it away and hopefully eliminate. A lot of the, the wind row at the curb line. So. What's that? It'll save him a lot of time. Yeah. Basically, from the other machine to, to doing it this way. Well, and I and the amount of snow that we get here, I watched Chicken last year. I don't know if any of you saw him, but in front of the houses down here, the one you know by where it got hit with the truck, he was just just bam doing this much at a time because it was so high, yeah. and that equipment won't do it. But. That's all he had to really use at the time because he didn't have anything else to do. So this is a large enough tractor that it's going to be able to do what it needs to do, I think. And we, like I say, we can put chains on the back tires. Um, I just I just hate to see this piece of equipment go to waste. And I think for, for snow removal in particular, it's, it's a much better piece of equipment than the, the van tracks is. Didn't you use the van tracks to, to throw salt on? Salt sand? That would hook onto this too. Yeah, there's a little pull behind right. salting thing. That just just spins around. Yeah, it's a little Kubota tractor with a cab on it. Um, it's got a mower deck. I think it was mow used for mowing a lot, but the mower deck has brought it away. Um, but everything else still works. The three point, I think it's a three point with with PTO. That all works just fine. Um, you know, I, I just trying to find you know increasing efficiency and because I'm really. A little concerned about his workload when it comes to snow removal because I think, you know, between this, these little side streets and the sidewalks and the parking lot and everything, it doesn't seem like a big area, but it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of moving snow around. And, uh, How old is the snowblower? What's that? How old is the snowblower? Uh, I don't know the date on it. It's only a few years old. He he looked. He went and looked at it and said it's got a little bit of rust on the bottom of it. Yeah, which it probably. But nothing that can't be repaired. You know, you know him. I mean, he can fix anything and weld it up. But do, um, we know, do we know if it functions? It does function. Uh, they did have it hooked up and it does function. Oh, okay. Yes. So the bearings yeah. are good in it. Yeah, they had it running. He, they had so it running. It just didn't. And, yeah, because if he went and looked at it and had it hooked up, he'd hear the bearings rattling yeah. if it was bad. That's, that's the thing that gets on these. It's the gearing side. But, you know, brand new, uh, these things are probably eight to $10,000. Exactly. And this one's two. And I might be able to work a better deal, but two is, is probably about where we're at. So. Just asking if you're if you would contemplate the idea. Um, it does require a, a motion to appropriate those funds out of the, the highway equipment fund. I'd be in favor of it. I think I guess my opinion on it would be um, as far as buying it, I'm in favor of it. I probably would rather see us pay for it through our general fund and find a way to make up the 2000 somewhere else. You know, it's kind of that, you know, if you want this toy, you know, maybe you don't get this toy this year. We don't have a lot of toys. <laughs> I know, but, you know, I, I, you know, we went, we, you know, we bought the truck through it, and, you know, I just, I, I don't want to, I personally would, wouldn't want to keep opening up that sure. piggy bank, because sure. that, you know, is highly scrutinized. And being $2,000 on a $2 million budget, I would think that we could make some concessions in one item or multiple items in our budget to, to buy this. You know, if that might be, you know, you got to buy a little, little less gravel on this road this year to buy this, then maybe that's the trade-off, you know. Um, that's just my opinion. What is the other machine costing us every winter for repairs? 
Well, I'd have to look. No, but I'm, I, I think it's more downtime than anything else. Yeah, but I, if, you're, if you've got belts, I mean, them aren't cheap. Right. It goes through a lot of belts. Um, the downtime is the worst thing because you, right. I, I mean, I don't know how many times chicken come in and said, oh, I flipped over again. And maybe that's operator error, maybe not. But, you know, the tires on that thing are only that big. Yeah. And you're in snow. So uh, I, I don't have those numbers for you. Uh, my guess is that. I just, was just throwing that out there. Just the downtime. Uh, for the piece of equipment and the 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 lack of efficiency of that other piece of equipment and just getting the job done, uh, it would pay for itself. I, so I don't know if that's really. So I mean, you're looking at putting the Vantrax up up on blocks for the winter, basically. For the winter, yeah. yeah. And going, or yeah. maybe has using it as a number two or a number two backup. It's a backup, uh, right? And using it as primarily a mower. You'll probably see on the heavy slush snow, you'll have to get that. Well, that's out. where I saw right. chicken getting in trouble. When you get that heavy yeah. slush, you won't be able to use that. <clears throat> It'll. Um, but he still got the blade for the Kubota, right? So I have the what? He still has the blade for the Kubota. Uh, I believe, yeah, we have everything still. So, I, mean, if, if, I don't know what if, shape If it's they got heavy, wet snow, you just switch over to the blade. Or, or he can use the Vantrax. I mean, it doesn't mean the Vantrax is never going to be used again. Yeah. You know, it's but still sitting there. So. Furrows after that slush freezes. Yeah. I, I remember seeing chicken just, you know, pounding on that thing. Trying, right. Trying to get through it. Right. So, I mean, I imagine this is it's a much... Well, this will, if it comes up change. in chunks, this will probably take care of the chunks pretty well. Yeah. And I think it's going to be faster overall. <clears throat> and that's kind of why I'm pushing for it myself. I want to, I want to, I just know he's going to be busy and I want to try to get it all done if we can. I don't know about the concept of shooting the, shooting the snow into the, into the lane and then coming back and plowing it when we've got, you know, we know we have parking issues already. Well, this would be at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Three o'clock in the morning. Awesome. Yeah. My bedroom's on the back side. Three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you don't wear your airplanes? <laughs> that's part of that, and that's part of what we're working through. I just met with, with uh, Morgan and Alan trying to work through kind of how this was going to look. Uh, and it's not always going to be perfect because it's it could snow all day long. You know, it is what it is. But um, the, the idea is that he would start at three o'clock in the morning or whatever, start hitting the roads and come back, and this would allow him time to, to shoot that stuff into that driveway and get out of there by five or six in the morning you know, whatever it is. I don't know what time you really start seeing people pulling into those lanes, but I imagine by eight o'clock for sure. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that something else we're working on is, is trying to... Yeah, I mean, it's usually yeah. pretty empty around seven, I would say. Yeah. Seven thirty. Yeah. yeah, I mean, these guys are starting at three o'clock in the morning, three or four o'clock in the morning. And if he has to start earlier, he will. I mean, he's not, yeah. he's kind of, you know, doing his own thing down here, so. Right. Um, yeah, you know, something else we that will go along with this is we're trying to move that snow uh, locally too and not, the idea is not to pick it up and take it away right away. It'll have to be piled somewhere until he can get back to it. But this just allows, you know, I heard a lot of complaints last year that that people are tripping, trying to step over a two foot high drift of snow at the curb line. And I, I get that, you know, there's only so far you can take the snow with the blade. So uh, this would allow us to, to get it out of there. I mean, I, I certainly like the, the concept of getting it, getting the snow out of there sooner and not having the constant fight of, you know, sidewalk snow being in the parking lane and vice versa. Right. Um, I'm curious if you have any thoughts to Chris's point about sort of where you'd be pulling the money from. Um, well, the uh, proposal right now is to take it out of the, um, the capital improvement. The sure. highway equipment fund. Yeah. But you were sort of counter-proposing to do it out of the general fund. Yeah, just do it out. Yeah, I would have to look at that because last year, you know, I had to come ask you for tires because right. there wasn't any money there for tires. So, I mean, we, we, we tightened that budget up per your request as much as we possibly could. And I, I mean, I hate to say, Alan, you can't have this because right. you need this. You know, it's, that's a tough sale. To, especially when Alan's not even doing the sidewalks, he could probably care less. It's coming from his budget, but he, you know, he doesn't care about that. That's a whole different thing, but I, we're tight anyway. I mean, I, I'll, I can do whatever. I, I always make things happen, but it would be a tough sell to, you know, last year, again, we were struggling just to put tires on the equipment. We had to ask for additional money out of this fund. And I get your point. This is not just a, a piggy bank of money. Um, but I don't know. If I start taking from somewhere else, I, I feel like I'm shorting Allen um, somewhere else. You know, that's, that's what we're doing. I mean, we, we dipped into it twice. We bought the new truck and the tires, and then we bought the tires, which the truck was a necessarily large 
tool to have, you know, right. expensive one. So we did we weren't able to balance our budget by getting the truck. Mm -hmm. And then the tires, we were at the back end of our budget, and we didn't have that. It was kind of an emergency usage. Yeah. Just a clarification on the dipping in. It, it, we dipped in for the tires. The truck, I actually redid the entire capital improvement That's plan. Right. Mm -hmm. The whole budget was changed, and I put yeah. some more realistic greater, numbers and I moved the grader yeah. out a little bit because it made sense. So it right. freed up some money, freed up some money. Um, so it wasn't really a dip. The tires were definitely a dip because we, we had ball time. Yeah. And there was no money in, in the budget. So we, we dipped in for that for sure. Well, I guess the, I guess the you know, two part you know, question for the board is one, do we agree on purchasing this piece of equipment? And, and two, um, do we agree with with borrowing from the highway reserve fund to do that. How about a compromise on that? We take it out now, and then if he can find $2,000 that he can eliminate in the budget, put it back in. Therese is gonna kick you. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I don't. I just, it's not a good concept, but it, it, it might be one way to do things. I'll pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Yeah, kinda. Well, that's like giving your kid 20 bucks. You think you're going to get the $20 ever back? I never saw it back. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> just a thought. I was just yeah. suggesting. You know, the capital the capital fund is, a, is an out years kind of a thing. You know, it's done over 10, well, 5 to 10 years. So it just feels like it's a little easier to absorb $2,000 out of 10 or 15 years than it is, right. you know, telling a guy that, hey, you can't get more sand or well, I know we're, we're tight already. I mean, if you look at these budget numbers, um, for the first four, um, we're you know tight, if not a little over in some of the areas of the highway department already. Right. Um, so to try to take two thousand out of that more is just going to throw that side of it into a ladder too. Yep. So it's. I, I think it's an effective use of the money out of the fund. I'd agree with Paul. Lindley? Yeah. Dave? <laughs> if, if, it's gonna, if it's gonna make it work better, what have we gotta do? So, we'll just need a motion. To make a motion, we uh, approve the purchase and that the funds come out of the uh, Highway reserve. Highway reserve fund. Second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Who seconded? Thank you. Got it. Is Morgan gonna bake us cookies for next uh, meeting? I can't see is, is Morgan gonna bake us cookies for next meeting? Just I don't know if you want Morgan <laughs> to bake you cookies. Fair. I don't think so. Yeah. I think Greg right, though there is an expectation that this year. It's all weather driven, you know, and what's going to happen. Yeah. But that, that things should be much smoother and more effectively managed, you know, since with all the new equipment and whatnot mm -hmm. that we've got. I think I, I think share that. There's a heightened expectation sure. that I hear that things are, uh, are going to be quite a bit different. Well, that's, I mean, that's the same expectation that I have. Yeah. And I think that, that's. I mean, I mean, everybody again, shares that's that. weather driven. Yeah, you know, but we had a nice little uh, powwow that that Mo interrupted rudely, right? Yeah. Uh, but I was meeting with Alan and Morgan to kind of go over the details of how this was going to work, and, and they were the same I, way. That's what I hear. You know, we got a new truck, we got a new plow, yeah. we're going to have to have to do this. You know, things better be better yeah. than, than what well, we've seen before. So. I, th I think the folks downstream are going to appreciate this next next yep. spring. Looking backwards. Yeah. And I think people in this town have high expectations and we're trying to meet them. Yeah. And I think, well, this gets us there. I mean, I'm not going to say this is going to be painless because we're all kind of learning mm -hmm. still. And we still got the, you know, the, the parking lot permit issue and all that. So, but I think we're, we're going there. We're getting there. And I, yeah. I tell you, the guys are ready. I mean, Morgan's pretty excited about it, having his own kind of thing. And um, he said he's already got the truck ready to go and he's kind of been up seeing what he's supposed to do. And, yeah, we'll see. You know, we'll see. The guys are ready to fall back and help each other out too. That was part of that meeting. You know, there was a lot of discussion about how are we going to communicate so that we know if one guy's not keeping up, you know, or if something breaks down because we know our equipment never breaks down. So if something breaks down, we've got we've got it covered. So um, I hope it works as well as I think it's going to work. I think it will. 
But this will definitely, I think, speed us up and get it. More cost effective. I mean, if he spends a half an hour less, he's got a half an hour to yeah. do something elsewhere. Right. And how many times have you seen, you know, you plow the, the snow into the side or into the curb and then the plow comes through and shoves it right back up on top of the sidewalk? You know, that's just job security, of course, but that's, that's kind of productive. So there's, this there's some areas to, on the sidewalks that he won't have to put it in the street anyways. What's that? There's some areas he can blow it in other places. You know, downtown, downtown here. here. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was actually going to meet up with uh, the, uh, the guys over at Babes, too, and see if we can't use that little niche they have next to the pizza place to, right. to store it. Because that's going to be kind of one of our, to me, one of our biggest obstacles is going to be where we're going to take all that snow yep. once we get it out of the way. Because it can't go away right away, but it can for a while. And then when he gets a chance, he'll go back and he'll grab his, his yep. backhoe or his loader or whatever and, and take it somewhere. But there's still a delay there. But this gets it immediately, at least, out of the way. So thank you. All right. And capital improvement reserve fund. Yeah. Um, so back in 2017, um, let me make sure I've got my wording here correctly. Um, there was a fund that was created. Um, and we called it, it was called the, um, I guess it's just capital improvements fund. So it was created in 2017 and funded with $50,000 in that fund. Mm -hmm. And, um, we've continued to put money into that every year. And if you look at the language of the, when the fund was created, it doesn't specifically say what it's for. It doesn't say, it really kind of says it's for a, anything anything and the reason why I brought this um, is I, I'd like to, f to talk with you about possibly either putting this on the uh, the warning for next year or, or getting some clarification as to what we really want to use this fund for um, during the in the minutes of this when this thing happened it really talked about if we needed a new truck or if we needed uh, a water line or if we needed this or needed that you know it's kind of there for a fallback um, but the more we talked in here, it sounded as though we were looking at it more as, as a kind of a facilities fund. Because we've got a water capital fund, or we're going to have a water capital fund. Uh, we've got a highway equipment fund. So we've got these other funds that we're, we're using, and we're using them like we should. But this fund is kind of sitting there in this kind of nebulous area, not being utilized. And I think it's partially because we didn't really know what it's for. Um, I was starting to put together a, ca a facility capital plan which would be for all of our, our buildings and, and things like that, to put together a budget for that in a long range capital plan, but I had no idea what kind of money I had. Because this, this was, in all, I think, in my opinion and everybody else, when I talked to you, we thought that's what this money was for. And that's not the way the language is written. So, in my opinion, we just need some clarification as to really, is this money really intended for facilities? Or is it sort of a rainy day thing? Is it, what is it? That's 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 what this is about. That's why I brought this here. I'd have to I'd have to dig through my. We had a packet that was done up, um, and I think it was put together with um, with Mr. Hall and Keith might have had a part in that. But um, and they had some well, they had some examples of what would be forecasted. But never had like an ending date. It was just you know like um, a new, a new town, a new town hall, or a municipal building. Right. The uh, public works building. Those were, that was for the most part the intention of that. So almost like your structures. But I'll have to go and look at it. But I, I think there were some other things thrown in. And I think maybe somehow the at that time the new rec building and stuff might have been well, in there. Um, Keith, in the minutes, Keith had said that it's, it's a fund for unforeseen things. Like, like say, a truck breaks down, we need a truck, or yeah. a water line. And so it was very, it was just, it wasn't real exact. And, you know, we have these other funds that we're creating and already have created for these particular departments, if you will. Mm -hmm. We've got highway equipment fund, we've got the road maintenance money, we've got, you know, we've got all these other funds. So... 
again, I was just trying to put together a facilities long range budget plan and I, I started looking at the language and I had no idea if that's what this is for. No, these were for the big ticket items, which was the municipal building that we need. Um, you know, it would be something like, I mean, we don't need it now, but projecting out, you know, 30, 40 years of maybe a new fire station, you know, that type of projections. Right. And, and the idea was if we put 50,000 in there a year, you know, and let's say we didn't really tackle it for 10 years, then we would have a half a million dollars to put towards a $2 million facility, you know, let's say. <coughs> so we wouldn't have to come up with 100% of it out of the gate. Yeah, and then this is, um, you know, at, at town meeting last year, that word, and I hate to use this word, slush fund came up. Right. And I can understand why people are, are using that term just because it's not designated for anything. Mm -hmm. It's a capital fund fund. So anything can be, I mean, I could take the $2,000 for that Kubota out of this. Um, well, it did, I, if you look at it. Not the language. I'm looking look solely at, at the language from it, the. It shows the items in there that, that were projected to use that money for. It, the, well, the warning says, create a fund to be administered by a select board for purposes of capital improvements. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm trying to think, did you have, were you on the board at that No, time? I wasn't. Um, I'll have to look through my notes, because I'm pretty sure I still have that. Well, like I said, I, I just read plan. the minutes, and the and minutes basically said that it was for yeah. a little bit of everything. Yeah. It, it was for, for emergencies, essentially. But that do, you have a co cap, do you have a copy of the capital plan? No. I don't. Well, I'll copy of it that I got from uh, Lisa. Okay. I'll so, dig through it. And you I, know, I got one too. All I'm really asking is just maybe board. if we need clarification, we need to discuss it. If okay. it is really, if the intent was to have it as sort of a, uh, a facilities uh, fund, great. I can take that money and then I can put it and project it out and start looking at facilities and see what we need to do. I just, I don't know how much I'm playing with here. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's truly the intent of the, the motion or the, well, the warning just says capital improvements. You know, I'm looking at the language in the warning, and that's what I have to go by, is, is what people voted on. Mm -hmm. And it just says capital improvements, which is a very open-ended yeah. item. So uh, if you have anything that you can maybe clarify for me, if not, I think it would be in, might be in our best interest to look at it again. Um, Reword it. Huh? Reword it. You clarify it. You clarify it. Yeah, clarify it that it's maybe it's for facilities right. or whatever. So that we know, and the people out there can quit using this slush fund word, and they know what it's designated for. So, what? what uh, how about we just? Um, why don't we continue this discussion at the next meeting? Yep. You know, um, and and either my myself or Paul will get you the the capital the capital improvement plan that we have copies of. I, I know I have that capital plan. I got it right at the house. I yeah, and, and that's not, not, unless there's some more language about this money, but it, and that's not so much the issue of the capital plan itself. It's more, well, I need to see the capital plan, I guess. Oh. It's more, what are the items, you know, because it, it, There are items listed at a cost right. on a spreadsheet. Don't have it all. Did they, were they all over the, like water I, department, sewer yeah, department? I, I don't know, don't okay. Know so I think the next question would be once we find that and look at that, we need to look back and say, are these really the items that we need to, you know, because we are going to have a capital plan for the water department. We're going to have a capital plan for the sewer department. We're going to have these individual mm -hmm. plans and hopefully funding out of each one of those, and we need to, to figure that out. If it comes out that maybe part of this needs to go to water, cool. I'll, I'll take that piece out, and when I'm doing my budget for facilities, I'll just know how much I have to, to add to it. So, And we, we've been this. meaning to circle the wagons on this for some time now, but... I think the when you'll when we get you that information, you're going to see that it's they had some details of what they wanted to use the money for, but no roadmap to get there. Right. So there's no projection of by 2025 we're going to start right. with a public works building. There's, right. there's nothing like that. Okay. Uh, the idea was to they developed a, a few items. There was like it might be four at the most. I think there's three. Um, I know it. And then to establish the fund that way we could. Get some, start some traction and, sure. and move start saving process. some money. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I, I know. I know the public works building and a a new municipal office were the were two of them. Okay. And I I want to say for some reason the rec facility or building or something was on there, but maybe. Well, there's wrong. the point above it on this morning is the thirty thousand for the rec facility improvement yeah. fund. So I'd be surprised if it was. 
So I'll, I get it. So I'll, it I'll look at. Uh, I'll look at. I know I have that master plan or that that plan. I'll look through that and then. Um, I just want to revisit if there are items in there that kind of cross over departments. Maybe like you know maybe that's not what we really want. Maybe we don't want to take some of this money and use it for water because we're going to have our own water fund and it's going to be funded independently through these other sources. So maybe that money is better used somewhere else. And I think you can see things like you know for instance if we were going to better the parking in the downtown area and we wanted to use or let's say we wanted to buy a parcel to do that mm -hmm. that would come under the capital improvement. Right. You know, if we were buying a parking okay. lot of said place. So I will look through it and I'll come back to you with, with maybe we need to have a discussion on how we how we itemize the items or whether or not those items are even. Oh, there might be not. items that we don't even need on there anymore. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Got sure. It. So we'll just continue that for next time then. Okay. The next meeting. All right, bridge thirty three. All right. So I think you all know where Bridge 33 is, uh, Lilyville Bridge, High Bridge, all that stuff. Um, we're in the process of replacing a wing wall on that bridge. Uh, it was required by the state. We got a state inspection that said that it's going to fall. You need to do it. You know, so we got engineering, uh, got a state structures grant. Actually got two of them. One was for um, engineering. The other was for the construction. Um, had an idea that we were having some issues with the project, we were having issues with their budget. Um, there was some engineering issues that happened. We, they thought they were on bedrock or what do you guys call it, um, ledge. They thought they were on ledge. The engineers thought we were on ledge, like two foot deep, come to find out there was no ledge. Uh, there was a revised plan that said, okay, you gotta go seven foot deep. Well, that's, that's all well and great, but it means five foot more concrete. Uh, that means a deeper excavation, that means a lot of things. So that happened. And then today I find out that um, when we put, when the engineer put this out to bid, they screwed up on their calculations and it was bid out, it was under calculated for the quantities. So of course, when the contractor did his work, he was looking at his quantities and putting that against the, 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 the bid schedule and saying, wait a minute, I'm twice as much. So let's get to the fun part. We have a change order, and two change orders. One is for the additional work for the excavation and the additional concrete for the not finding the, uh, the, the, the bedrock under the footing. The other is for the, um, the quantity issue. We're looking at roughly $87,000 that we were over budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did the... Um... Um, I have reached out to the engineer, haven't heard anything yet, because in my opinion, in my opinion, some of this is, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's not anything that we did. Um, mm -hmm. I think, well, the quantity thing is easy to say. They screwed up on our calculations. And I'm gonna call, and, and when I, I'm gonna call them again tomorrow, but I want to sit down with them and I want to look over and calculate with them how they got to what they got to. And maybe, maybe the contractor is missing something. He brought me a change order today that has all the calculations that he has. Um, but I want to sit down with our engineer and see what, what they're calculating. Maybe, maybe, they, maybe the contractor is wrong. I don't know. But um, that, so that, that mess up in quantities is roughly $21,000 that we're over. Uh, the change order for the uh, not hitting the ledge at roughly two feet uh, is sixty-six thousand dollars. Were there borings that were taken? Prior? That's my next point. This is why I have a problem with the engineers. They did one boring. Mm -hmm. They did one boring, and they and they got with a uh -huh. drill rig. They hit one spot. They did one spot on this entire forty-two foot long span of a of a wall, and hit a rock or hit something, and said we're at we're we're at the bottom. And they engineer it from there. Um, I'm not an engineer, but I've played one on TV. And something like that, you would have done at least four boring holes right. on that, at a minimum. Um, You'd be surprised. I work with engineers in the state yeah. every day, all day. And I want to, I want to go back to this and say, hey, don't kill me. I'm just a messenger. I wasn't involved with this, with the design or anything. It was before me, but. I don't know that we're going to be able to get anything from these engineers. Uh, I think it's ridiculous that they were given. Well, let's give me some more. Let me give you a little more good news. Um, 
we paid them roughly 30% of the construction costs for engineering. Mm -hmm. Normally, you're looking at about 15 to 20. Which one of your board members pointed that out? Yes. Yes. I don't want to mention any names. And that was because they, and, and their theory on that is because they had to engineer the whole bridge. They had a reasoning. They had a reasoning for it. And, and they had no, and luckily we got another structural grant and it didn't cost us hardly anything to do that part. But, so they were already overpaid. And then they, they don't spend the extra $800 or $1,000 to put an extra couple holes in the ground. Uh, that burns my backside big time. Um, I don't know what I can do. I'm going to make the call. I'm going to look at the quantities. I mean, you know, they might wash their hands of it. I don't know. And the only re recourse we really have is we don't use them again because I don't, I'm not impressed. It's my first time with them, my first rodeo with them, and I got bucked off. And well, I don't like it. Why don't we do this? Why don't we, um, if it's all right with the board, uh, we have an executive session to talk about um, something else tonight. Why don't we add a second executive session? It means there could potentially be legal right. implications okay. in regards to this, and we yeah. can talk about that. I, do you want to hear my, sort of my resolution to where the money's gonna come from? You're paying for it. Oh, awesome! <laughs> You're right, the check? <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you wanna hear that now? Do you wanna wait till we get to wait, the executive session? Yeah, no, I would just, I would just caution on any, you know, anything that could implicate It's not gonna implicate us. One way or the other, you know? No, no, so I think we probably if- probably add a session it, okay, if we had to pay the check tomorrow, which I've got a, a pay request here, so we need to pay the check, um, it would come out of our highway maintenance fund. Uh, now, here's something else about that fund. So this is that, that money that's been put in to do roadway maintenance every year. Um, I looked back at all of the um, town meetings and all the warnings that were done. That fund is not a special fund. That is not a carryover fund. It was never put together that way. And I think I was under the impression that some of that carried over, and I, I don't know if others were or not, but that money that were, that, that 100 and, what is it, 130, I think, that we put in, 111. We put 111 and 110 every year to do different projects, road maintenance, small road maintenance projects in town. But if it's a fund, it should carry It's not a special fund. It was never voted on as a special fund. It does not carry over. So that is there. That money is there to cover this overage. Um, if, it gets, if it gets to the end and we say, well, we have to pay it, the money's there. Um, but it just delays our next well, sort piece, of. which is, I think, our next piece, piece was the new Sand Hill Road. Yeah, it does. But we also yeah. can't carry that money over. So it's not like it's a, a and I've looked, I've looked, Chris, I looked through everything. When they put that fund together, that fund is in the budget as just a regular budget item. It is not a special fund that, that gets funded every year and kind of accumulates. That's not what it is. Um, and I hope you check and prove me wrong, but it, it's not, it's not. Hmm. So anyway, um, those funds are there. There's $110,000 that was, that was in the budget last year that as far as I can tell, it's a use it or lose it, so it's there to be used. Um, it will delay some of our road maintenance. We'll still be able to do some road maintenance. We've got some things to do, because we were kind of laying back on a little bit anyway. Um, but that's where the money would come. Well, we were laying back hoping that we could use extra to exactly. tackle the next piece. Because we thought we could carry it over. Rather than go to the voters for more money. Correct. Right. Yes. Yes. So, I'm just full of good news today. Um, yeah, no heat, and, and now this, you know, what next? <laughs> I figured once I told you this, there'd be enough heat in the room. To, to no, I'm still freezing. Oh, no. No. <laughs> yeah. October 31st, you guys will be toasty warm. I'll turn the heat up this time. So, yeah, um, we'll see what the engineers say. I mean, they're not, uh, I mean, I, engineers in Colorado are the same as they are here. I'm sure they're not going to give any money. Uh, their contract, I'm sure there's a, I looked through their contract, and there's not an Arizona emissions contract. Um, free a clause. clause in there um, but I just don't know I don't know you know it I mean in my opinion it's it's this is their issue this is their they're the cause of this issue um, if they had done more borings I mean there is no guarantee that you're gonna you're gonna find something different but to make an assumption off of one hole in the ground over a 42 44 foot span of wall 
Yeah, and that's what it is. It's all tillage. It's all flood glacial tillage in there. And they hit a rock of some kind, and they got refusal on their drill bit, and they said it was it was done. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that was my question. I was going to ask you, but <laughs> now I know. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is for the contractor. So that's for the contractor if he has oh, issues. Not, and he, an not on the engineer. That's the contractor. And the contractor's had, you know, act of God and all that kind of stuff. And we would have to go for liquidated damages and all that. And we're not there. I mean, this is not their fault right. by any means. Um, that's, that was for the, if you read that again, that's actually for the contractor, not the engineer. Yeah. I've read them. That's not my, not my field. So. No, sure, sure. But I mean, I wish it was like that. But yeah, um, the engineer base are the yeah the engineer has basically washed their hands of this. Um, they were hired. They were well. They were hired to do design. They were hired to do the design. And you know, I, now granted, things happen. Change orders happen. I get that. But is I mean, it, again, I'm not an engineer. But one hole is that enough to design? You know, an entire span of something. I just don't see it. And then also to screw up your numbers when you're an engineer, you're screwing up your calculations. If that is true, and you know it costs your client twenty something thousand dollars. Ten percent. Yeah. That that's a problem. Now I'm hoping that that the contractor's wrong and I, when I sit down with the engineer she goes over the numbers and says, no, we're we're right. But they're not. Because I got the rebar numbers and the rebar is done by uh, by weight. And I got all the tickets from the, the bill of ladings that came in from the rebar producers and, and the, the contractors, and it's, it's way over. It's way over. So. Well, let's, um, what if it would be over because of the increased concrete? Oh, yeah. No, no, not the rebar would. This is the rebar. Right. The rebar is all the same. Nothing changed with that. The, the, so, we're the, so now we're going to get into some nerding stuff, engineering that I like. What we had to add concrete to was the subfooting. So the subfooting is not necessarily the load bearing component, but it's kind of your uh, kind of your leveling course, if you will. And but it has to be on a an adequate material. So and it has to be so far below the stream bed. And they so, well, they thought when they hit ledge that it was far enough below the stream bed that they could do all this stuff and it would be on a on a solid platform and it would have little nuances to it. This whole cross section that long. And they did one hole here. I don't know how you make this, but um, instead of being that, you know, two foot deep or a foot, it ended up, they, they had to excavate down to seven because that's where the engineer said it was competent enough material and structurally sound enough. Uh, that's all concrete. And that's where a big part of this cost overrun is, is that you went from, we went from 72 yards of concrete was our estimated, actually 70 yards of concrete, to 130. From seven? 70. Oh, so we doubled the concrete cost. So that was an addition of $25,000 right there, just in concrete. Um, and then, of course, because it's deeper, they have to excavate it out further to get their slopes and all that, so they've got more excavation, more backfill, more everything. More time. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I mean, it sounds like, I mean, either way, if, Whoever's fault it may may or may not be. It's probably something that won't get settled now. Well, so we will have to move forward and finish the project. In the meantime, I exactly. In the meantime, I'll pay the bill with these change orders on it. We'll just pay the bill, and then we'll have to figure out where it's coming out. Honestly, I've already called the state. The state says there are no more grants. You're tapped out. We've already got the we've got the structures grant. We've got two of them in a row. We got, and they're maxed out as high as they can go. So there's. There's nothing else. Uh, well, let's let's take it into executive session. We can talk mm -hmm. on the legal. On the legal part, things. sure. But I just want to let you know that I will be paying this bill, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and we'll we'll have to just figure out how it shakes out later on. There goes your snowblower. See how we put the snowblower attachment there first? Yeah. Oh, you know, timing <laughs> yeah. is everything. Didn't it just work yeah. out well? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted. I know I spoke with you about it. Reference maybe. Um, not everybody up in Lilliesville was provided with a piece of mail 
stating that the bridge was going to be closed. So a lot of people didn't find out until Monday morning when road signs went up. Um, I found out at Tunbridge Fair on Saturday, so I was able to kind of spread it through Lilliesville for those that hadn't been notified. The mail system, there's going to be flaws, you know, I understand that. But maybe in the future, hopefully not on Lilliesville anytime soon, but for future bridges in Bethel, putting up road signs a few weeks in advance. Stockbridge did some fixing up on the Gaysville Bridge, and they had signs up several weeks in advance, and then when the start date was confirmed, they put up the sign when the start date would, would start for construction. So just and so on the letter, um, we sent letters out to everybody on, on that was directly affected, we thought, on the roadway and in any little offshoots of the road. Um, I asked the, the ladies in the office who sent those out, and they said they, the addresses were all based off of the grand list. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, so I don't know if, there, if some people are not getting it because the, the address is wrong. I don't know. We are going to send out another letter because we, I think the letter that you got, or they didn't get, but said the 18th. I believe was a date. So of course that's going to be extended now. Um, I've got a better idea of what that date might be. So we're sending out more letters. So you should be, and we've corrected your, um, I think we've corrected the address on yours. I know we have. Um, so you'll should see another letter out there too, to kind of give you a better idea of, of what the, what the date looks like. Probably three or four weeks, probably three weeks. I'm hoping, and it won't be finished by then. Yeah, you're on camera. Um, he told me he thought if everything went well, and they're actually working in the rain, they're doing everything. When it rained the other day, like Thursday, whatever, they were out there tying steel. I saw. Yeah. Um, they, they just, you know, honestly, the, the part that takes time is the concrete has to set up. You can't just pour concrete and away you go. There you go. So he knows, you know, you got a little bit of time there. They are going to use some quick up type concrete, uh, which allows it to, to set up a little bit quicker so we can get traffic on it. And they'll have a, he, he thinks within two, probably three weeks, knock on wood, within three weeks they'll have a lane open and they, at least you can go through. And then they'll be doing all the rest of the work down, down below. But they gotta wait on guardrails too. And that's one of the things that's kind of an unknown at this point is it's a company that comes in and does their guardrails for them. So they're waiting on those people to kind of coordinate everything. So, cause they can't open the bridge without guardrails. It's illegal, you can't do it. Um, but hopefully three weeks. But you should be getting a letter soon. With some, well, we'll put it on the web. We, we try to always put them on the website and on our Facebook page. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll update that also once I once I complete the letter. Really? Okay. Well, I'll work on that. Just friendly future. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand. That. I understand why you're. Especially not getting a letter we, we, too. We knew that we chose to live far out there, but yeah. then this like that's just like. Yeah, and I've talked to the guys about doing some additional grading out there too. Did you also tell them that I gave them compliments and thanks? I did. I always tell them about kudos. Good. Yeah, we always tell them about that. So. Yeah, so you want to hopefully see some more grading work out there too. I mean, they're busy. We got one grader, but they know that traffic has increased in those areas. So. Yeah, you did. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, be patient with us. Yeah. Well, the guys out there on the job are doing the best they can, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right.